Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea ETS-1A. What do the E, the T, and the S stand for? Well, E stands for engineering, T for technology, and S stands for science. And so this is the first of five engineering disciplinary core ideas. And on this one, what we're looking at is how to better define and delimit an engineering problem. And so it's important that your students understand the difference between science and engineering. Engineering is the application of science to solve certain human needs. So an example of one that I've talked about before is how did we get the Mars Curiosity to Mars? And so what we're looking at there is an engineering problem. And so when you're talking about this with your students, make sure they understand that if you're a scientist, or if you're doing science, what you're really trying to do is understand phenomena in the universe. And so Einstein's an example of a scientist. And what he was doing was asking questions. And the idea is to come up with to answers to those questions that we have about phenomena in the universe. How are engineers like Thomas Edison a little bit different than that? What we're looking at is solving human needs, solving human problems. And that always begins with defining the problem and then coming up with a solution through this process of design. And so that's important that your students understand the difference between the two. In inquiry, we're coming up with an answer. In design, we're coming up with an answer as well. But there may be more, more than one answer to those problems. And that's the big thing that's different in engineering and science. In science, there's going to be one answer to that question. Now, it may, may be an answer that's um, contributed to by a number of different variables. But there's going to be one answer to that problem or one answer to that question. In engineering, there's a lot of different answers. And so what was the problem NASA was faced with? They had to get Mars Curiosity from the Earth to Mars. And so how did they do that? Well, this is the solution they came up with. Put it on a big rocket. Eventually, we're going to have a capsule that deploys. It's going to move into the atmosphere. We have a parachute. That eventually is released. We have rockets. We have a sky crane with rockets. And so it's a really elaborate solution. And they probably had a lot of other solutions to this problem as well. But this is the one that best fit the criteria and constraints of this problem. And what future problems are going to we're going to have as humans, we're going to have to have energy in the future. We're going to have to clean up our water. We're going to have enough food for all the people on our planet. And so it's important the students understand the importance of engineering and that engineering process and how design works because they're going to have to come up with solutions to these problems. And there's this real simplistic view of engineering, this idea that if we have a problem, all we do is come up with a solution, and that's design. It's not as simple as that. What we're going to have is a very difficult problem and a solution that has a number of what are called criteria. And so every solution is going to have criteria. A good way to explain what criteria is, is these are going to be the wants of that solution. This is how good we want our solution to be. And what's going to stand between the problem and the solution? Those are called the constraints. And so there are going to be a number of different constraints between the problem and the solution. And so real design is going to have to hit these what are called needs. We have to have these constraints and then these wants that we have. And that's what design looks like. But it's even more complex than that because there's going to be a number of different designs and a number of different solutions that we're going to have to come up with before we eventually come up with one. We'll talk more about that in the next video. And so let me give you an example that you could use in school. It's called the naked egg drop. What you do instead of a conventional egg drop is you simply drop an egg from a height and the students get to choose that and then you don't want the egg to break. And so you might say well, that's impossible and it is impossible if you drop it on a hard surface. And so in this problem, the solution is to come up with a container that can stop that egg from breaking as it falls. And so what are some of the wants that we would have in that container? Well, we would want it to work. We want it to be durable, low cost, and then it could work at a high drop. In other words, we could drop the egg from a high height and it's going to survive. So those are the things that we want in our solution. What are some of the needs? Well, you're going to find the needs if you're doing an engineering problem like this in school. That's going to be the list of materials, the things that, you're, that you can use in the, in the experiment. And so in this case, if you're to Google naked egg drop, most of the directions are going to say that it has to be independent. You can't just sit there and hold the container and try to catch the egg. It has to remain intact. It can't break apart. It has certain materials you can use. You can't use glass, for example. And then it has to have a specific volume. It can't be too high. It can't be too wide. It can't be too long. And so those are going to be the needs. You're not going to be able to enter it into that competition unless you've satisfied all of the needs. 
and then we get to the wants that you have and so you come up with a design problem so how do you teach this in school well a great way to teach it is to actually give them a problem and a, a problem that you might want to use is called the marshmallow challenge if you go to marshmallowchallenge.com there's a TED talk given on this and it gives you the directions on how to do this but imagine if we're talking about lower elementary grades if you were to just give them the following direction today class I want you to build a freestanding structure that supports one marshmallow here's your marshmallow go well if you were to do that what they would do is be confused scared probably but they would start asking you a bunch of questions and that's the first step in this engineering process they would ask you questions like who's in my group what can we use how long do we have to build it should it be short should it be tall what should it look like they'd ask you all of these questions and these are the questions that an engineer would ask themselves when they're coming up with a solution um, and so solutions as we move into the upper elementary grades should be based on two things it should be based on the materials and resources that you have and it's okay to call those constraints with your students and then uh, an example if we're doing the marshmallow challenge would be what we can use you get a marshmallow spaghetti you get some tape string and then you get a certain amount of time and then the wants that we have what are the desired features well in the marshmallow challenge you want it to work you want it to be able to support that marshmallow which is actually harder than you might think and we want to make it as high as we can when I've done it in class we do it as a competition you get 20 minutes you want it to be as high as it can without breaking and most of them end up breaking as we move into middle school we want to talk about the importance of defining the problem and really spending a lot of time analyzing the constraints and analyzing the criteria of this problem that we have good example would be this when they were trying to land curiosity on Mars how much time do you think they spent on defining the problem, coming up with the criteria, coming up with the constraints? They had to know a lot about, you know, how much money can we spend? What does the atmosphere of Mars look like? What materials can we use? What's success? And so really have your students spend a lot of time on that first step. It's going to save them time later. And then as we move into high school, we want to start talking about future designs. In other words, designing solutions to future problems that we have problems that I addressed earlier like energy and food supply and the idea that we're gonna have a number of different c constraints we're gonna have a number of different criteria it's important that we really define that problem but there's gonna be a whole different set of criteria and constraints that are gonna be societal in other words that other humans have because in the future we have to share these solutions with everyone else and in and, and certain solutions that we have may impact other individuals and so when we're designing for the future we have the clearly the criterion constraints of problem at hand but also we have societal constraints because we've got some serious problems a lot of those related to climate change in the future and we're gonna have to have some smart kids that can solve them that's just the first step to find the problem and then come up with a better solution and I hope that was helpful